Hi students, welcome to session 6 of Form and Movement in Animals. Students, in the previous session we discussed about the movement in human beings. How does the movement in human beings take place? Yes, the human skeleton. It forms the framework of bones and we also studied about its functions that human skeleton performs some important functions that are necessary for survival of human beings like it gives strength, support and shape to the body and without a hard and rigid skeletal system human body cannot stand upright and it will just become a bag of soft tissues without any proper shape. Even it gives protection to delicate organs like in areas like the rib cage and skull the skeleton protects inner soft but vital organs like heart and brain from external shocks. Even any damage to these organs can prove fatal. Therefore, protective function of skeleton is very important. Even the bones of the human skeleton in all the parts of body provide attachment to the muscles. And these muscles provide power for producing movements of body parts. And in these movements, the parts of skeleton act like levers of different types thus producing movements according to the needs of the human body and the most important one is the production of red blood cells bones like the sternum which are which is attached to the rib cage and the heads of some muscles or heads of some bones which produces blood cells and they are the sites of production of new blood cells like the bone marrow right so this is the substance which is present in the bone and it produces blood cells which are very important which serves as a very important function for the survival of a human being so basically we studied about the different parts of the human skeleton and we also studied that there are bones which are present and there are joints and muscles which are very important for our body because they help us to form or to uh, or they bring about movement and the three types of joints which we studied were fixed joints then freely movable joints and slightly movable joints right and freely movable joints they are further divided into four ball and socket joint, pivot joint, gliding joint and hinge joint and what this is what which we are going to discuss in detail in today's session. So I welcome you to learn this planet and let us now start with today's session with the types of joint, the types of freely movable joints. Yes, the first one is the ball and socket joint. Now before discussing about ball and socket joint, I would like to discuss about some thing about the joints. As we know that although there are many different joints but they are div divided into three basic types based on how little or how much they let the bones move. The three types are fixed, immovable, fixed or immovable, slightly movable and freely movable. So what do you think students that what are the joints and what do they do? Yes, joints allow our bodies to move in many ways like some joints open and close like a hinge such as knees and elbows whereas others allow for complicated movement a shoulder or a hip joint for example allows for backward, forward, sideways and rotating movement so joints are classified by their range of movement like immovable they, they are the joints which don't move the dome of the skull for example is made of bony plates which must be immovable to protect the brain so just think that if the bones of the skull are moving, they are movable, then how will they protect our brain? That is why they are immovable. So between the edges of these bony plates are joints. They are the joints which are present, which protect the brain and they are also present, which hold uh, also present in the place where they hold the teeth and the jawbone. Then there are partially movable joints which move a little. They are linked by the cartilage 
and each of the vertebrae in the spine moves in relation to the one above and below it and together these movements give the spine its flexibility and the freely movable which we are going to discuss it is the joint which moves in many directions which help us to move in many directions the main joints of the body found that hip, shoulders, elbows, knees, wrists and ankles are freely movable and they are filled with some fluid which acts as a lubricant to help the joints move easily and they provide and movement and they are they play a big part in voluntary movement voluntary means which we can move right so let us start with the first joint which is ball and socket joint now what happens that in this type of joint the ball like surface here you can see this is ball the ball like surface of one bone fits into a cup like now here this is a ball you can see this is a ball like surface and it fits in this cup like hollow surface so in this type of joint the ball like surface of one bone fits into a cup like hollow in the other so what is the example of this let us see yes joints at the hips and the shoulder so here you can see the picture first picture is the joint at the hip and this is the joint at the shoulder so basically here you can see these are the beautiful pictures which shows the ball and socket type of joint which is present at the hip as well as at the shoulder so a ball and socket joint allows maximum movement in all the directions as we know that ball of ball and socket joint is a type of movable joint a freely movable joint and so we can say that it allows maximum movement in all the directions so the most range of movement by the joints is provided by ball and socket joint in which the spherical head of one bone lodges in the spherical cavity or hollow like cavity of another in the shoulder joint you can see here in the shoulder joint the upper arm bone this is the upper arm bone this fits into the socket of the shoulder blade this is the shoulder blade and because the socket is shallow and the joint is loose the shoulder is the body's most mobile point means mobile point means it can move and here you can see that the hip joint is less mobile than the shoulder because it is more stable so the ball of the femur's head femur means which is the longest bone the thigh bone it it also fits tightly into a deep socket in the hip bone now here this is the femur and this is the hip bone right so what happens that the ball of the femur's head this is the femur's head it fits tightly into the deep socket in the hop, uh, sorry hip bone right and that is why binding the two bones is among the strongest in the human body right so these are the joints at the hips and the shoulder right joints at the hip and the shoulder all right so this is about ball and socket joint let us move on to other type of joint yes pivot joint now what happens that in this not in this joint in this type of joint sorry to be mistaken in this type of joint what happens that the rounded surface here you can see the rounded surface the rounded surface of one bone fits into a ring formed by the other this is the rounded surface now 
just imagine that this is a bone and the rounded surface of this one bone fits into a ring formed by the other such that one bone is able to rotate over the other and this will keep on rotating you can see the arrows this will keep on rotating like this so this is also a type of a movable movable joint right a pivot joint now where you will be able to see this joint where is this joint present yes joint where the neck joins the head this one so here is the pivot joint so this is the joint where the neck joins the head right so this is pivot joint which allows a rotating or twisting motion like that of the head moving side to side here you can see the head can move side to side because of this pivot joint it will not move 360 degrees but it can move 180 degrees it can you can see left side right side right just try to remember try to recall that whenever you cross the road you you should see you should first see to the left side uh, to the right side and then to the left side right so how you are able to move this head which joins the neck it is because of this pivot joint have you ever gave a thought that whenever you cross the road you see to the right side and then to the left side how is it possible this is because of the joint the pivot joint which is a movable joint all right now another type of joint is the hinge joint this kind of joint or this type of joint provides back and forth movement similar to the hinges of the door now have you ever noticed a door opening and closing whenever you open the door or close the door there are hinges because of which the door is joined yes so just assume that when you are closing the door when you are opening the door in the same way this joint also works so what are the examples where can we see these joints where are they present yes joints at the knee and the elbow this is the joint at the knee means we can say that this is the knee joint here right and this is the elbow you are able to move your elbow because of hinge joint so this is the elbow joint this one is also the elbow joint a more clearer picture of an elbow joint right so the joints at the knee and the elbow are the hinge joints the simplest type of joint is the hinge as found in the elbows and the joints of the fingers and the toes so these hinge joints allow movement in only one direction you cannot move it 360 in 360 degrees it's not possible because this joint allows movement in only one direction so the hinge joint of the knee which is the body's largest joint or the longest uh, sorry we can say the largest joint is unusual because it can swivel on its axis allowing the foot to turn from side to side thus the knee is constantly rolling and gliding during walking or jogging or running have you ever gave a thought that when you whenever you are running what type of joint is used yes hinge joint because when you are running the knee is constantly rolling and gliding right and that is why we can say that knee joint comes into picture and the daily activities which you are carrying out you can just try to imagine that which type of joint are we using while drinking milk or drinking tea while dancing or while gliding or while walking and rolling while playing right so 
this will give you a more clear picture about where the joint is present and what type of joint is used where. Right, so the last one is gliding joint. This kind of joint allows bones to glide over each other providing little movement in all directions because it allows the bones to glide over each other and that is why it provides a little movement in all the directions. So basically we can say that these joints are present in which part of our body? Yes, joints at the ankle and the wrist. So here you can see this is the ankle joint, this is a picture of the ankle joint and this is a picture of the wrist joint. So this one is the wrist joint and this one is the ankle joint. Right? So what happens that gliding joints actually permit a wide range of mostly sideways movements. You can try it you can try to move your ankle, you can try to move your wrist and you can move it up and down and sideways as well as movements in one direction. So a pivot joint near the top of the spine allows the head to swivel and bend and the other pivot joints in the forearm and the lower leg allow the wrist and ankle to twist. So basically these Gliding joints permit a wide range of mostly sideways movements as well as the movements in one direction too. Right? But they are not as the pivot joints or hinge joints or ball and socket joints. All the four joints are very different from one another. So basically, these are all the movable joints, freely movable joints.